Welcome all summon the Sun Wheel or the Sun Cross. At least that's what it's been called uh, the past couple hundred years. But the reality is we have no idea what this little symbol was called, um, and we certainly have no idea what it symbolizes and the ancient use of this symbol. Even though we do have some great theories that uh, may very well be true. But the only thing we actually know for sure is that it was a very sacred, ancient symbol used by multiple cultures, but we find it uh, most often in Bronze Age Scandinavian art uh, and rock carvings. And this is actually why it's my favorite symbol, because as you know, um, the Viking Age is not my favorite time in Scandinavian history. It's actually the Bronze Age that was the most fantastic time in Scandinavia, in my opinion. And even today I'm wearing the Sunwheel pendant. Even though I don't wear this that regularly because it is a powerful symbol um, used for specific purposes and I'll tell you why that is at the end of the video but again we don't know for sure there are some great interpretations and I have some interpretations of my own and of course we can learn a lot from the actual archaeological finds and that's what I'm covering in this video. So the first question, the sun wheel, um, does it really have anything to do with the sun at all? <laughs> Let's see. We have basically no written records uh, from anywhere near the time that these uh, sun wheel carvings were originally done. So these rock carvings and also um, these other symbols are about all we have um, from Scandinavia and then other places in the world like I'm showing you here. So these you will find in Sweden. These are the rock carvings from the Bronze Age. Most of them are at Tandem, um, and they're also in uh, a lot of them in southern Norway and uh, southern Sweden, uh, but you can also find them in Denmark too. Okay, yeah, it looks like this can be the sun, maybe. The problem is we have another image on this exact same rock carvings right nearby that definitely is the sun. And look at this one here. This one is literally carved right next to a sun. So yeah, this may definitely be associated with the sun, but it's not the sun. In addition, we find this exact same symbol nearby in these rocks carvings still at this same location. And here it is clearly a chariot wheel. So what the hell? <laughs> you know? And sometimes it's even seen like here, looking like a shield. And then look at all these, um, and, and then also we find it carved into the rocks in random places in Scandinavia like this. What are all these used for? We don't know. If we go a bit broader, we can find it used as a tool here, like maybe uh, it looks like someone's holding it up as a ritual ornament in a ceremony like a lot of these other uh, rock carvings depict, especially the bronze, uh, uh, bronze lures that we know was an important ritual item, so this could be a link to the uh, sun wheel too. Next is this one. It looks exactly actually like an archaeological find that we have from Bronze Age Denmark. The thing is looking like a magnifying glass or something like that, just to be held in your hand. We also have this, what is believed to be a hairpins for ornamental use with a depiction of the sun wheel. Uh, those were found in Bronze Age Switzerland. And we also have here a bunch of sun wheels found in Switzerland and the Bronze Age. They were worn as jewelry, like pendants, just like the one I'm wearing here. And finally, this beautiful piece of a chariot. Really beautiful. Uh, looks like it's pulling the earth or perhaps it's the sun that it's pulling. And I think that's gold and, and bronze or, or whatever the material that is. And, and that we know from many mythologies around the world that a chariot being pulled by an animal is pulling the sun um, or the moon. So of course we find these myths and symbols of the sun wheel uh, chariot all over the world even as far as the Native American homelands actually. But of course, uh, by far we find these symbols most often in Scandinavia, Bronze Age time. And then it kind of disappears. We don't really see it in the Iron Age later on or in the Viking Age, definitely. And we definitely don't see it in Christian times. The only time we maybe see it in Scandinavia after the Bronze Age is in Sami art, uh, how they paint it on their drums uh, sometimes. Uh, if anyone has any knowledge about uh, what this means in the Sami or Native American tradition, please let us know in the comments. I I'm just not aware of any. So, what does this all mean? Uh, well, as always, like the myths, 
our gods, like many aspects of our spirituality, this symbol has multiple meanings and is multifunctional, and that's why these things are so beautiful. But, as always, even if it uh, might be representing and, and symbolizing so many different things and, and used for different purposes, they're all somewhat related if we can get a bit creative and connect the dots. So one theory is that this is not an actual image of the sun, but instead it's the travel route of the sun going around the earth. And this is the uh, dividing line on the horizon here. And then it's, of course, uh, at the highest um, uh, point in the uh, cross, it's uh, at midday. And then at the lowest point, that's the darkest uh, part of night. I like that. It's very possible that uh, could definitely be true. Or, of course, it could be... You know, something else, it could be the Earth's rotation around the sun, and the four points represent the uh, solstices and the equinoxes. Who knows if humans knew that, whether the sun was revolving around the Earth, or it was the Earth revolving around the sun, like we actually know it is today. Doesn't matter, the perception at the time was the same, at least they had some understanding of the cosmos revolving around each other. Fair enough. So that could also explain why this is seen as a uh, chariot wheel. Just like a chariot pulls the sun in many mythologies, in the Norse beliefs it's the two horses, Orvakir and Alsvidir, who pull uh, Sul, the sun goddess, and their names literally mean awake and very quick, or the all quick one or something like that. Remember that because I'm going to come back to it uh, last in the video. But anyway, I think that interpretation is right, that the sun wheel represents the journey of the sun or the journey of the earth around the sun, whatever. I'll send you guys to another YouTuber too, who I like a lot, Jun uh, Rasmussen. He has a channel called Nordic Animism, and he relates it to something called the Congo Cosmogram, which is a symbol used in West Africa, uh, believed to be a symbol representing the direction of the sun, just like um, one of the theories about the sun wheel was. But it's also representing the life of humans and all living things, and it's a symbol of rebirth, the ever everlasting cycle of life. Just like the sun goes up and is at its highest points every night we are at our highest point in the middle of our life until we reach the horizon and it's time to die and then we go deep deep down and that's where that um, lowest uh, axis is on the cross and that represents when we're in the uh, furthest uh, place in the realm of the dead. I'm explaining it really shitty. I don't want to go into it any more than that. I'm, I'm probably not saying it right. And I don't like speaking about other cultures, beliefs, and depths that I don't uh, understand a lot about. So just go watch him in this video. He's very knowledge. I think he's got uh, some education in uh, like African, uh, African religion, something like that. And he also speaks about how uh, it was used in um, shamanic type rituals to cross into the realm of the dead, which it very may well be used for in the north of Europe, uh, and, and just like they used it as a tool too. I believe uh, this is what was used for, among other things. At least that's what I've thought the past a uh, uh, few years when I learned about this uh, West African symbol. Now, some people don't like it when we draw Norse similarities to African or any other non-Indo-European cultures, and I don't agree with them. I think even though those two people never really had any contact and we evolved completely separately, basically, with no contact... But at the root of it all, we're not that different, especially when you look at the original animist beliefs of all humans. If, if, you are, if you are truly spiritual and you believe in our religion, like a lot of you say you do, then that means that you believe that our ancestors discovered some very correct things, some very true things about the universe and our spirit and the cosmos and nature and things like that. Other cultures may have very well discovered those exact same things, okay? If you come at paganism or animism or just understanding of nature from a monotheistic point of view, then yeah, you believe that some guy wrote something down a long time ago and we're just supposed to believe it. But if you come from a pagan or an animist point of view, we're not supposed to believe a damn thing uh, anyone else said. We are supposed to make those discoveries ourselves. We're supposed to observe nature, observe things, do spiritual work, and make discoveries and, and discover those exact uh, truths. So, of course, 
if you do believe in that stuff, it's likely that humans all over the world discovered those exact same truth. We all had similar rituals. We all had geniuses, even though some uh, cultures may not seem that smart. Maybe they had some geniuses too. So yeah, of course, it's likely that uh, ancient cultures, completely unrelated, unconnected, they all discovered the same types of things, even if you don't want to believe we don't have anything in common. So that is very well possible, and I have been a believer of this use of the sun wheel, like I said, for a few years now. I use it when I try to do some spiritual work, trying to send my Hugot out into other realms. Schleipnid is also a very good tool for this, but I won't go into the details of my practices, of course, because I don't want uh, those kinds of things out in the open. But I will give one other little addition to the function of the sun wheel. I believe it's also something to be used in a ritual uh, to the sun and to ward off Hjangnaruk. Just like the two horses pulling the chariot in Norse mythology pull the sun to avoid it getting swallowed by the wolf. Uh, I forget if the... Is it, it's Skirl and Hati, but I can't remember which one actually chases the sun. But it's one of those. But one of the wolf uh, is going to swallow up the sun and bring Ragnarok, of course. And yeah, it's true, these sun wheel pendants that we find um, in the Bronze Age are much, much older than the myths we have recorded in the Norse uh, sources. But the original myths are a common Indo-European thing going back seven, 8,000 years. Like I said, almost every uh, culture in Europe has some myth of the sun and moon being pulled by a chariot. So that means that we can trace it all back to when we were all one people, Indo-Europeans, again, seven, 8,000 years ago. I've spoken about this before. I think Hidangnarek is an ice age and humans had many rituals to ward off this climate disaster. But the idea is with the sun wheel, again, this is all an act of sympathetic magic, what I talk about all the time. If you use these symbols and paint these carvings and probably even some sort of mock ritual that humans did where they maybe imitated the chariots pulling the sun, all these types of things uh, from a, uh, you know, animist uh, sympathetic magic, uh, really ancient tribal perspective, all these things that they do influences the sun to keep revolving like it does and it keeps coming back and keeps from being swallowed by the wolf uh, skirl or hati and again i forget that I'll, I'll speak about that exact myth in another video and what uh, uh, the wolves and the horses all represent so it could be that the sun wheel was a part of a ritual probably at the midwinter when there was no sun and in the midwinter in scandinavia they could have definitely believed that the sun was dead, right? If you're all the way up north, there is no sun in the winter. It could very well be dead. And then they use this sun wheel as a tool to help send their hugur into the realm of dead and bring the sun back, bring the light back, and which in turn brings the god Baldr back, just like Hermulda did in the Norse myths. So that's just me, uh, my thoughts on that. Uh, also pretty interesting, I must say about that though, the Bronze Age where we find these symbols was a very comfortable, pleasant, uh, warm period in history. When we start to see the disappearance of these symbols, when they weren't kind of uh, painted or, or carved on the rocks, or we, we don't find any more archeological things from that time, right after the Bronze Age, that's when the world starts to get cold. The Iron Age and the Migration Period was very cold. It was a mini Ice Age. It got warm again during the Viking Age, but then there were lots more images of similar things to the Sun Wheel, like swastikas actually, which I believe is a continuation and evolution of the Sun Wheel. That's way too long of a subject, and I'll have to do another video on that. But, you know, when these inscriptions of swastikas, they were all over the place in the Viking Age. Really, really common. But by the end of the Viking Age, they started to disappear and not be carved anymore. And guess what happened then? Another mini Ice Age, uh, which happened in the Middle Ages. 
So maybe we are in a warm period right now in history actually because there are so many cars and their wheels are turning and those things influence the sun to keep moving and coming back. Um, and also the direction I think uh, plays a part there. The sun moves anti-clockwise so any things moving anti-clockwise might help the sun continuing in that direction. I know you guys don't have to believe it I'm just saying all kinds of cultures um, uh, primitive cultures all around the world believed these things that they could influence the uh, uh, forces of nature with rituals and imitating the uh, uh, effects that they wanted to come out of it it's just a funny thing to think about but of course it's not that simple there's much much uh, other things that comes into play but those are just my thoughts spiritual talk let me know what you think this is why I make these videos it's so we can all share ideas and learn from each other and compare and really discover the uh, lost beliefs of our people so that's all I have to say for today